Welcome to a new episode of the 90s Metal Gamer, where we stay hydrated and play video games. I bought this GameCube quite some time ago and I've been meaning to get around to fix it. But because of adulting, I have not been able to. There is no audio, no video, the disc isn't spinning, and the laser isn't reading the discs. Spoiler alert, I was not able to fix this GameCube in this video. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to fix it. I'm going to make this into a fun series. Let's get started. And in the lower shed. I want to see your tiny head. At this point, I have taken apart so many GameCubes on this channel, I can probably do it with my eyes closed. But I'm not, obviously. So we're just going to speed through this. But, as always, first things first. I must ask that you do not use my videos as a reference or tutorial on how to repair your GameCube. Should you choose to use my videos as a reference or tutorial, you are risking bricking your GameCube. So once again, Please do not use my videos as a reference. They are simply a means of entertainment. Thank you. When I was initially testing out the GameCube in the introduction of this video, I was using Metroid Prime 2 Echoes as a reference. And I forgot to take out the disc. Speaking of the Metroid series, I've made review videos over Metroid Fusion, Metroid Prime, and Metroid Dread. You should check them out. Upon further inspection of this GameCube, it looks like it was in some moisture at one point or another. There is rust here. As I mentioned in the introduction, there is no video, there is no audio, the laser isn't reading the discs, and the disc isn't spinning. So I'm going to have my work cut out for me. If there is rust on the vents of this GameCube, then I'm pretty sure there's also going to be ruts on the PCB. We'll get down to it. Something tells me that this GameCube was probably left in an attic or something, considering the amount of dust that's on this thing. But we are merely scratching the surface of this thing. We have a long way to go. This GameCube is slightly different from the ones that I've worked on previously. This is a DOL-001. And the other ones that I've worked on were DOL-101. The internals are just slightly different and there are two AV ports in the back of this GameCube. Other than that, I really don't know what the difference is between the two. While I'm taking apart this GameCube, I need to talk about what's going to happen with the channel over the next few weeks. There's going to be a point where I am not putting out any content at all for about a month or so. It's going to happen around June, rolling into July. Reason being is I am going through a career change and I'll be moving to a whole new state. Well, not entirely new. I'm going back to my home state. I don't necessarily like talking about this on my channel because it is not what I want to grow this channel upon. But I am active duty military. I've been in for over 12 years already and I will be transitioning into the civilian world. I will be entering some very unfamiliar territory and it's definitely going to take some time to get used to. So if you start to notice that I haven't published a video in a while here in the future, you know why. As you can see from the close up here, the GameCube was not shown the love that it truly deserves. There is no obvious or physical damage to the naked eye, but that doesn't mean there's not something wrong with it. PCBs are a rather sensitive thing to work on. I may be an amateur at this, but I know my way around a screwdriver, a wrench, and a soldering iron, and there's nothing I can't fix without those three. Okay, now this is where we get into the meat and potatoes of all this the heatsink. 
I need someone to explain something to me, please. How long is thermal paste supposed to last? I am quite positive that this GameCube has never been opened up. My mind cannot process that the thermal paste still looks good even after 20 years. So please drop something in the comments and let me know. It's driving me crazy. How long is thermal paste supposed to last? And how often should it be replaced? Here's a close up of what the thermal paste looks like. It has the consistency of slime that's been left out for a few hours. Not completely dry, but there is definitely still some moisture in them. Oh, but we're not done yet. We're tearing this thing all the way down. We still have a ways to go. I think this might be my longest teardown video in my teardown playlist. Speaking of that, I have playlists for every type of video that I do. The unboxing, the review, and the teardown and repairs. You should go check them out. And while you're there, you should go ahead and drop a comment too and let me know what you think of my new style videos. I have this rule that I follow for all of my teardown and repair videos. If I open up something, I clean it up and I replace the thermal paste as well. In all seriousness, there is a legit reason why I decided to do repair videos on this channel. Once I am out of the military, this is the field of work that I'll be going into. Not exactly, but it is very, very similar. So I'm trying to brush up on my skills before I actually need to put them to the test. The internal damage on this GameCube is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Nonetheless, there is still damage. There is a minimal amount of rust that's on the internal base plate, which really doesn't make this a big issue. And I am still not done taking apart this GameCube. Don't worry, we're almost there. Just bear with me for a little bit longer. Here comes my favorite part for every teardown and repair video, the air compressor cleaning. I want to make sure that I get every nook and cranny that I can possibly get into when I'm cleaning this GameCube. If you were paying attention in the introduction of this video, I said I was not able to fix this GameCube in this video. So I'm going to turn it into a series. There is going to be a part two. And because I was not able to fix it, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to give it the care and love that it truly deserves. I'm still going to give it a good cleaning. And we are still not done taking apart this GameCube. I still have to take apart the disk drive assembly. So let's get into it. Overall, the GameCube is really not a hard system to take apart and to clean. But once again, I must ask that you do not use my videos as a reference or tutorial on how to take apart your GameCube. Please, I'm begging you at this point. Since the laser is not reading the disc, nor is the disc spinning, I'm taking this down to the very bare bones just to see if I can see any kind of physical damage whatsoever. 
The laser assembly and the disc spindle were held together by rubber mounts, so it was just a matter of prying it out. Really not that difficult. The disc spindle and the laser had ribbon cables that were attached to a motherboard that was on the underside of the assembly, so we had to pry those out too. Upon further inspection of the spindle and the laser, I did not see any physical damage whatsoever. So that tells me that all the damage is internal. Lucky for us, I bought a new spindle and a new laser. eBay is an absolutely wonderful place. Hopefully this will fix the issue. Spoiler alert, it does not. Now this is where the really tricky stuff got started. I had to replace the spindle and the laser, but that requires a very steady hand. And I do not have a very steady hand. I am 99% positive that at the time of this recording, I was hopped up on a bang. But wait, there is more. The laser was much more complicated in comparison to replacing the spindle. The laser was on a rail system and had to take off the rails in order to replace the laser. And this required me to have a very steady hand. And once again, I do not have that. If you can hear my heavy breathing, it's because I was definitely breathing heavily. I was super focused and trying not to mess anything up when I was replacing the rails. Out of all things that I've done repair-wise, this had to have been the most difficult thing that I have done. Alright, now that we have replaced the spindle and the laser, we can move on to our next thing that we have to replace. The motherboard.
The last GameCube that I repaired had audio, but no video, so that tells me something was probably wrong with the AV port. And for this one, there is no audio, nor is there any video. So that tells me something is wrong with the AV port once more. But it is shielded, and I don't know how to replace it without breaking the PCB. So I figured it might be easier just to replace the PCB altogether. But of course, if I'm going to do a complete refurbishment of this GameCube, we have to replace the thermal paste. It is the law. Well, it's my law, at least. I'm going to do things just a little bit differently. I got a recommendation from a subscriber to the channel, and he mentioned that I should probably use thermal pads instead of thermal paste. So I'm going to take your advice. The biggest issue that I had with thermal pads was that I had to cut them down to fit the size that I needed. But in reality, that was not a very big issue at all. And since I couldn't find my scissors, I used trauma shears. What I really liked about using thermal pads instead of the thermal paste was that there was less mess to clean up afterwards. This was significantly easier to use in comparison to thermal paste. Thank you YouTuber Jeremy Fleischman for the recommendation. It worked great. All right, now that we have made all the necessary replacements to this GameCube, we're going to go ahead and put this thing back together. While I'm putting this thing back together, please enjoy some music courtesy of White Bat Audio. Okay, we all know this GameCube is not going to work. I mentioned it many times throughout this video. But I want you to see the error message that comes up on screen. So we can confirm that we have video here. And after I turned off my camera, I can also confirm that we have audio. So the video and the audio both work, but it's still not playing any games. 
At the time of recording this video, my mind decided to not acknowledge the error messages that came up on screen. So I kept turning the GameCube on and off thinking it would fix the error itself. Obviously it didn't work. There was still something wrong with this GameCube and I am determined to figure out exactly what it is. Something tells me that it has something to do with the motherboard that's under the disk drive assembly. At this point in my recording, I am in denial. I refuse to believe that this GameCube is not working. No matter how many times I turn it off and on, I still get the same error message. So stay tuned for part two. Thank you for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you found me. Please consider subscribing to the channel. I love y'all, stay hydrated, and stay tuned for my next video.